Uh, we do, though, have in studio RMB's chief economist, Etienne Leroux, with some very exciting numbers. We've heard too often on this program, and I often get accused by people of saying, why are you such a gloomy guest? Well, sometimes there is uh, good news, and indeed on the RMB Business Confidence Index, it is good news, Etienne, for Finally. first time in ages. Yeah, exactly. we, yeah. Businessmen or business people are saying... Uh, are a little we, bit more upbeat. All right, let, let's just yeah. start at the beginning. You, 50, uh, an index score of 50, means it's neutral. Yes. The index has been below 50 for a while. For a while, exactly. Just broken above it now. 100% for the first time in almost two years. So we're just in net positive territory. Why? But it's good news. Um, uh, remember, Alec, we cover five sectors, um, and we had um, quite a nice response, an upbeat response from uh, um, uh, people in the building industry, particularly on the residential building market and that has been a recovery that's been going on for the last two to three years so, there so there's, there's good news there okay. clearly you you're involved you, rmb is not f and b but yeah. you would have had a, a a good view of what's happening with lending by banks into the home loan uh, home industry is that is that replicated in what you're seeing from Indeed, the construction sector? banks are becoming a little bit easier in providing um, mortgage loans um, no doubt about that um, and that is backed up by central bank data. In the rand value of new home loans granted, we've seen quite a nice improvement there. Um, so, so that's good news. And also, um, talking about F&B, some of their property surveys are showing very clearly that real estate agents and more and more real estate agents are actually complaining about a lack of stock. So shortage of property, good quality property to sell. Which is good for the people in your survey who build houses. Absolutely. So, so there's a consistency there. Um, and here we're talking about the index level as high as 66, Alex. Um, so that is in strong um, net positive territory. Um, we've also seen quite a nice improvement in confidence amongst manufacturers. Now that's important, mm. manufacturing a big sector in the Given economy. Given the strike that we've just Absolutely. So some of it may simply be a bounce back um, after the, the, the strike um, that we saw in the third quarter. But more importantly, if you look at the underlying data, you'll see the domestic sales orders um, and export sales. Um, uh, orders and volumes, um, for that matter, um, has improved. Um, that's quite encouraging. Um, what we've also seen is that production is up, not as much as, as sales volumes, which means that they, uh, many of the uh, manufacturers have satisfied the improving demand by selling inventory, but now we're at a point where inventories are quite low. So if the demand is sustained, production can actually pick up quite nicely um, mm. um, in, in, in future quarters. This is an interesting uh, point because when the RAND weakens, it does make it more, or make South African produced more products more competitive. Absolutely. So, so you would expect to see some improvement if we get labor relations. 100%. So except for those own goals and SI specific factors, um, we are truly in a, in a very favorable uh, environment for exporters. Um, just think about it. Um, global growth is improving moderately, but moving in the right direction. The rand is is weak, um, and oil prices are are at almost record lows again. So it's it's a very favourable condition if you mm. if you're a competitive exporter to begin with. If you're running a lean and mean business. Um, the external environment, you couldn't ask for much more than what you've currently and entrepreneurs got. are resilient. We heard that from Carl Cumbia a little bit earlier Absolutely. from Mercantile. So they would have by now shrugged off the strike <laughs> and said, well, uh, let's look ahead. Let's yeah. perhaps uh, yeah. invest a little bit more and, and get more confident into the future. Uh, is that uh, what you're seeing in your numbers? Yes, uh, to some extent, and especially if you take the view that the RAND, um, at least in our opinion, is going to stay undervalued for quite some time. So for us, RAND weakness is just not a, f it's not a flash in the pan. It's, it's here to stay because we would argue that the economy, given how imbalanced it is, needs the currency to stay weak for, for longer. If that indeed is the case, um, and global growth um, and the recovery that we're seeing there does what we hope it will, um, so much more reason to see a little bit more fixed investment in export orientated sectors. There so is that's a good. bright side to the uh, political issues that seem to be bedevil the headlines. All right, so we've spoken about two of the of these sectors, mm -hmm. construction and manufacturing. What about the other three? Yes, um, retail is also interesting, and we saw it in today's GDP data. In the third quarter, um, um, real value add of wholesalers, retailers, all combined, um, grew by 3.5% at an annualized rate, which is pretty decent. 
And here we've had a situation where confidence amongst retailers have been in net positive territory for a while now. Yes, it dipped five points in the, in the fourth quarter, but it's still 55. So the net majority of um, retailers are pretty upbeat about things. <laughs> it surely is suggestive of the fact that um, slowly but surely, at least our survey results would suggest, that slowly but surely trading conditions for many retailers um, continue to improve. Now I say many retailers, now obviously you have to mm -hmm. differentiate. Um, uh, what our survey results show is that retailers of non-durable and to some extent durable goods are doing a little bit better than for example retailers of semi-durable goods. It's interesting in the Steinhoff uh, acquisition today of Pepco there was mentioned there by the Chief Executive Marcus Joester of a move to value. Absolutely. Uh, are you seeing that in your in your results as well? That <laughs> the bottom or lower end of the market We're is, is doing better. We're seeing it specifically in the car market, Alec. Um, um, here we have a situation where, uh, if you survey dealerships of new vehicles, they are downbeat. I mean, uh, it, there's n there's n there's not a good story. But uh, dealers of second-hand vehicles are a very upbeat bunch of people. Um, so there's no doubt to switch from from more expensive new cars into more affordable second-hand cars, people are looking for value. Mm. So who's struggling? Um, well, new vehicle dealers are struggling. Confidence level is still low at about 30, so that, that tells you that. Um, and uh, other strugglers would be, well, considering the fact that manufacturing index is still below 50, um, but once again, we talked about the underlying picture in the manufacturing sector not doing too badly. So, so all in all, Alec, um, uh, three sectors doing okay, two struggling, new vehicle dealers and, and, and wholesalers where confidence didn't change. It stayed flat in the fourth quarter. When you look at it overall, it's an interesting uh, graph, the business confidence index, because it's, it's coming from below and it almost gives you the impression that it's about to start shooting yes. strongly above that 50 level. Is, yes. is um, that just a, an optical illusion? No, I think um, just go back over the last two years, um, it's almost as if we've had experience a stop-go, stop-go um, process. And the moment it seems to be getting better, then there's an own goal. It's uh, industrial activity or unrest or strike, whatever the case is, putting the economy back. And then you're just getting better, uh, bouncing back, and then there's another setback, if not locally, but also globally. So it has been a battle, and you see it in the GDP data. I mean, the economy has been battling to grow um, at 2% even. Um, what our res survey results um, point to, Alec, is that we may have, in the fourth quarter of this year, post all the strikes, we may actually have a much better performance from the economy um, GDP wise. Today's data printed 1.4% annualized in the third quarter. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a number 25 to 3% annualized in, in the fourth quarter. Still, we're talking about an economy this year that will probably only grow at somewhere between 1 and 1.5%. One and mm -hmm. I think the good news from all of this is that um, if the fourth quarter pans out GDP wise, um, similar to what our reserves um, survey results suggest, um, we would have a good starting point going into next year. So I think not with, an, uh, it's not going to take a big push to get GDP growth higher next year than a weak, weak number this year. Well, we're coming off such a low base, aren't we? Uh, so from right. that no, perspective, no, it's, it's already going to be a lot better. But looking <coughs> ahead, is it still a structural story? If, you, if you're going to kick this economy yeah. uh, into gear, Absolutely. Structural issues, are they, is there any signal 100%, that they're being addressed? 100%. Um, talking about signals, um, mixed signals, I guess, um, and the structural issues that we need to address, we've, we're quite familiar with those. The central bank, every opportunity they get, they make mention of the fact you know, that we need to improve um, the competitiveness of the economy. We need to, to do stuff um, smarter so that we can see productivity um, improving. Uh, we need to um, and, and continue to address the structural issues, i.e. the bottlenecks that we have on infrastructure, for example. We really need to push hard on those things. All of those things um, act as a cap on our growth rate. Lift that and you can, you can really see growth doing much, much better than what we've seen over the last couple of years. Etienne Leroux is Chief Economist at RMB.